welcoming you onto the field here at Reeser Stadium following Oregon State's 38-15 win over the Idaho State Bengals to kick off the 2024 campaign. Publisher Brendan Slaughter here for BeaversEdge.com. Join my Beavers Edge writer Ryan Harlan. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us here on this edition of the Edge Post Game Breakdown. Uh, we're going to get into the nitty gritty, obviously, of Oregon State's win over the Bengals. Um, we're going to break down both sides and definitely check out BeaversEdge.com as we're going to have a complete takedown or takeaways and breakdown from today's action. But uh, Ryan, you know, before we get into kind of the offense and defense specifics, let's just talk about how weird of a game it was. Like, I don't like. It, I know it was a 3:30 kickoff. It almost felt like an 11 a.m. kickoff, just for like. The stadium wasn't as full as I thought it would be. It was a little sleepy. Crowd wasn't quite into it early. Then we see kind of the offense have some struggles early. This game is 9-7. Idaho State leading at one point in the first. Things obviously turned in Oregon State's favor as we would have expected against a team, um, an FCS team. But Ryan, you know, for the most part, did it surprise you how competitive this game was for how long it was? Well, yeah. I mean, that that was exactly kind of my first impressions. I thought, okay, this is, you know, a lower-tier FCS team. This team is much better than them by far on paper going across the board. But at any level of competition, you know, the saying is any given Saturday, any right. given Friday, any given Thursday either, right. too, of, of college football. And, I mean, we're seeing and, what's going on in Eugene right now. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just, exactly. I mean, who knows? By the time you exactly. all watch this video, it could be a lopsided score. But, hey, when we're yeah, recording no, it, it's it, interesting. <laughs> exactly. And, and so that, that's something where it's like it's week one. Guys are figuring things out for the first time. And at least for Oregon State, like you're installing a brand new offense and you're getting to see that in actual game environment for the first time. So there's going to be some hiccups, of course. Definitely, definitely some hiccups, but yeah. but uh, I think once they figured it out towards the second half, as, as Bray kind of said uh, in, in his presser uh, just just a little while ago, that they finally were able to play some clean football that they were right. kind of looking to do early on. Right, and obviously, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, be kind of diving into the takeaways uh, in our takeaway story at Beaver's Edge, but Ryan, let's go ahead and start with you on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, took, you know, a little bit of time to get going uh, the first half. It really didn't seem like we're going to had any intention of throwing the ball in the first half. Um, again, saw a lot of different things, but ultimately, Giovanni McCoy had a pretty good stat line when it was all said and done. What were your thoughts? Because when we went into the post-game press conference, it didn't seem like anyone was too concerned with how the quarterback play was. No, and 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 really the goal that Ryan Gunderson came into this this week was to run the ball, and to his credit, he stuck to his guns and, right. and set up the run game, and... Uh, and that's something where where I credit credit him for doing that, and it's easy to kind of go away from that when that's probably not working, or the offense is not you know, sure. doing what you want it to do uh, early on. But Giovanni did what he needed to do, make the throws that he needed to make. There was a couple of throws that could have gone either way, but for the most part, pretty solid performance overall in his Oregon State debut and his first win in his career against Idaho State as well. Um, both Jam and Hank dominated on the ground today for almost running, both almost ran for over 200 yards. Nuts, Not quite yeah. 200, but that's pretty, yeah. pretty impressive, all things considered. And credit to the guys up front, too, for allowing them to gain seven yards per carry on each of their rushes for, for the most part. So uh, that's really kind of what they set out to do. And then finally, once they opened the playbook, uh, that's where you kind of saw Giovanni kind of find his rhythm, find his find his groove, his mojo, and uh, be able to orchestrate Gunderson's offense effectively compared to compared to the first half where it was a little more of a struggle. For, sh for sure, and obviously we'll be keeping an eye on you know, the developments this week offensively. I also got to shout out David Wells, one of the best catchers I've seen in a long time here at Reeser Stadium. You know, it looked when, when the ball was in the air, and we got a great vantage point from where we were at in the press box, and I, I, I turned over to Ryan, I said, I think that's overthrown, and Wells being able to have the speed to catch up to that, uh, very impressive. Uh, was a bit surprised we didn't see the tight ends utilized today, uh, but we'll check back into that in about a week. Uh, flipping over to the defensive side, uh, obviously, you know, Ryan, you know, when the, when the game started, you know, all, all told, you know, they only allowed 15 points, you know, to Idaho State. So from that perspective, you look at it and call it a good, win, uh, you know, a good success. But yet, Oregon State's defense, you know, allowed 300 plus yards. It really seemed like the short, quick passing game, very I, I looked over at you very Washington State-esque in what it used to be. Just those quick slants, quick slants, quick slants. And it seemed like that was what was, you know, the, the death of a thousand cuts for Oregon State for the few times that Idaho State was able to score. Um, you know, overall, I still think the defense is Oregon State's strength. But some things today that you know, still need to be cleaned up. Um, you know, I like the linebacker play. I thought even though they didn't get home to the quarterbacks a ton, the pressures were decent. 
Um, you know, Kobe Singleton got into the mix today, even though he didn't start. I think he will be getting better as the weeks go on. Um, and then, you know, for the most part, I think Idaho State threw some wrinkles at him, Ryan. I mean, you're talking about the four quarterbacks that they played. You're talking about, you know, having um, just a bunch of different personnel, offensive units. And I thought for an FCS team that was going to throw everything out of Oregon State, the defense did a pretty good job today as well. Oh, no, absolutely. I think, yeah, that little wrinkle probably played a little bit of a role. You know, you get four different quarterbacks in there, all with different strengths. And, and, and moving, and they move that ball effectively. And and there, there's some things where, like penalty wise, they also shot themselves in the foot sure. a little bit on defense too. Ray kind of alluded to it, like, yes. hey, we need to we need to stop with the dumb penalties and, and clean those up and play play better football on that side too. So there's still room for improvement. I mean, Jaden Robinson and Skylar Thomas both said, like, hey, we had to rate how we played today. Probably about a five out of ten. Room for improvement, sure. but but overall, some solid foundational things to go forward on for this defense uh, in the week two against San Diego State. Absolutely. We'll be previewing that San Diego State matchup, uh, obviously, all week at BeaversEdge.com. And, you know, obviously, the big takeaway is Oregon State's going to have to play better. Uh, on the road, San Diego State, a better team than this uh, FCF team in Idaho State that we saw. So, lots for Oregon State to get back to the drawing board with, but nevertheless, you always like to do that from a win. Oregon State gets the 38-15 win. They start off the season 1-0. and Trent Bray gets his first win as Oregon State head coach. Uh, make sure to stay locked into Beaver's Edge from everything from Ryan and I from today. Thanks for watching.